my name is Kaylee Gonzalez. I'm Applications Engineer with MLC CAD Systems. So I've been with MLC for quite a while. As you guys saw, I was hanging up on the screen for a little bit. Um, I did celebrate my 10th year anniversary last September, so going on 11 years this year. Um, I did work as a metrology applications engineer for three to four years before I joined MLC. And then if you go back even further, we're getting to where, you know, it was too long ago to matter. But I do still get people who ask me if I have an engineering degree, and yes, I do. I went to Embry-Riddle up in Prescott and got my engineering degree there back in 2010. And then when I'm not doing all this technical stuff, um, I do quite a bit with music in my spare time. I like hiking and trail running. My knee's kind of messed up right now, but when it's not, I like being outside. But hopefully, eventually, that'll resolve itself. So this is kind of where you're like, oh, I like long walks on the beach. No, I don't really. I'm not a big beach person. But what I'm going to be talking about in this first section is SolidWorks Model Mania. Now, um, originally, this is was something someone from SolidWorks was going to present on. But if you've never done anything with SolidWorks Model Mania, what exactly is it? You may have heard of it, you may not know a whole lot about it, you may have even participated in it at one point in time. So Model Mania is a SolidWorks modeling competition and it's hosted at 3D Experience World, which used to be called SolidWorks World. They rebranded it a couple of years ago, exact same conference, but it's kind of like this giant modeling competition. There's like five to 6,000 people who go to 3D Experience World every year and a big portion of them participate in this Model Mania challenge. So what this is, is you're measured on both time and accuracy. So you have to be as accurate as you can, get 100% accuracy and have a ridiculous time. You have a total of 20 minutes to complete the entire kind of modeling competition. And whoever is the most accurate and the fastest, you get some neat kind of experiences and prizes at the end. Basically what happens is you're giving like a phase one, two dimensional drawing of a part that you have to model. They time you on that, they have you put in a material, then you enter a mass, that's how they know if you're accurate or not. Then you are given a phase two drawing with design changes that you have to compensate for. Now you don't see the phase two drawing until you're done with phase one. So that's where sometimes a lot of people kind of get caught up in that because you can start a model a ton of different ways and then see the changes and you're like, oh, I'd have known that, I'd have done that completely different. So that's intended to kind of throw you for a loop when you do this. Now, some of the older model mania challenges, they actually had you run like a very, very basic simulation study for like factor of safety. They don't do that every single year. I'm not gonna be covering anything with the simulation, but that's just another area for a lot of stuff to go wrong if you're not expecting it inside of um, that modeling competition. I participated in the model mania like once when I first started working in SolidWorks and I did awful because I was a brand new user, so we don't need to elaborate on that. <laughs> but the last time I was there at SolidWorks World was probably seven or eight years ago, just to give you some context. The winner of it was like within six or seven minutes. So they're going really fast, like 20 minutes, they're like, hold my beer, like watch me finish it. And they're really, really into it. So if um. It's something that you're interested in. You, you want to get down to about the six or seven minute mark on, on these. This was the 25th year of doing the Model Mania Challenge. There is a link online. You can just Google SolidWorks Model Mania. And one of the first links that comes up is all of the models, all of the drawings, all the solutions from the last 25 years. So one of the best ways to practice stuff like this is just to go through and just get exposed to all the different models that they have. These are not intended to be super complicated, but they're complicated enough to kind of knock you off course. So some tactics here. Use multi-purpose sketches. So when I, what I mean by that is think of utilizing sketches for more than one feature. This is something that a lot of people do anyway, but a lot of the approaches to modeling that I see is you tend to do one sketch, do a feature, one sketch, do a feature. You're trying to kind of multitask when you do this. So think of doing that at the beginning, you have like a skeleton sketch and it kind of drives everything down the tree. When you look at the drawing, recognize patterns and symmetry. So if you can only do like a third of the work and do like a 
three part circular pattern, then that's what you should do. Keep track of symmetry. That's going to make editing and updates much faster. So try to recognize that inside of your drawings. Now, use shortcuts whenever possible. That may seem redundant, but I'll explain kind of why when I kind of go over some of these. And I'm going to just refresh some of these short keyboard shortcuts as we go. So the S key in SolidWorks. I'm sure a lot of us use the S key. This brings up a lot of commonly used everyday functions that you have. There were some enhancements to that in SOLIDWORKS 2022, such as the search command, and I'll show you what I mean by that. The Q key also came out around SOLIDWORKS 2022. It allows you to toggle on and off reference geometry like planes, so you don't have to hide or show. You can just hit the Q key. Mouse gestures. There were enhancements to mouse gestures. Again, you can program up to 48 functions inside of your mouse. 12 per each environment, so 12 per sketches, 12 per parts, assemblies, and drawings. Breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs, I think, is extremely underutilized from what I see. If you're like, I don't even know what that is. So breadcrumbs is kind of like a truncated design tree. You click on a face, and you get the actual kind of design tree for just that particular face that you're selecting. In general, what this allows you to do is you stay really focused on the design. So the idea of implementing a lot of these shortcuts is to try to reduce using the design tree and the command manager as much as possible. Now, if you have ever seen somebody who actually does that, they really fly through modeling. You, we waste so much time kind of messing around in the design tree, finding stuff in the command manager. You're not gonna get away from it 100%, but for those of you who have like the really fancy like 3D connection mice, one of my coworkers at MLC had foot pedals and I told him to get a life. I was like, you, you just need to find another hobby. <laughs> but you can definitely set it up that you're really reducing a lot of that extraneous motion. So I'm gonna show you just a quick refresher of some of those shortcuts, make sure we're up to speed on some of those enhancements. I'm gonna talk about the drawing and phase one and phase two. I'm actually just gonna show you what the solution was for the 2024 Model Mania. It gives you a really good idea of what is involved in the competition. So let me go down into SOLIDWORKS here. Now I'm just gonna open up a random generic model. This isn't anything to do with what we're gonna create, but this is just to cover some of those shortcuts. It's easier if you have an actual model on your screen. So the S key, this allows you to program and open up common functions. So if you're like me, I'm not a very pictorial person. So I had to really sit down and like memorize what these look like. But you have all your arrows here for boss extrudes, cut extrudes. I have fillets, ribs, planes. The search command is also here. So I know there's a feature called dome that I don't hardly ever use, but I know it's there if I need it. I can launch it. I can save it. I can find it. So you can do quite a bit just inside of this search function. I don't even have to touch the rest of the interface. That's probably like 70% of what I do on a daily basis. The Q key shows your reference planes. So you can toggle them on and off whenever you want. Again, I don't have to come over here to the side to click on it. So I can easily just toggle those on and off as needed. Going into the concept of uh, mouse gestures. There's also keyboard shortcuts. Um, I tend to use these quite a bit. SOLIDWORKS comes with a lot of these predefined. Some of them that I tend to use a lot is I have N for normal to, I have I for isometric, I've programmed these in. What I find is those two alone, I greatly reduce how much pan, zoom, and rotate I have to do with my mouse. Just completely eliminates that whole kind of necessity. So I have like M for measure, I have Alt M for material, and then mass properties is like Shift M. So these are all things that you can customize. It's gonna allow you to snap through things pretty quickly. Again, thinking of like a competition. Mouse gestures, notice that I have eight mouse gestures, but before I mentioned you can go up to 12. If you're thinking to yourself, well, why do you not use 12? Because when I'm going really, really fast, I cannot grab things at a 30 degree angle. I miss it every single time and I get super frustrated with it. So I was like, forget it. I'm going to stick with eight because I can easily grab things out of 45. It's up to you, though. You can do whatever you want. This is just 
for myself, I find that I was not very accurate that way and I got frustrated. Breadcrumbs, if I click on this face, notice how we have kind of a truncated tree here. I have basic strewed. I can right click on this, get all of my editing functions. I can click on another face. I can have my sketch. I can get all my editing functions. I can go into sketches. Again, I haven't even touched my command manager. I haven't even touched my design tree just by looking at the model. Again, other items that I use heavily are things like these fly out windows inside of the design tree. You'll see quite a few of those as we actually go through the presentation. So again, those are just some of the shortcuts that I recommend that you get very familiar with. Customize, work with them. Once you know exactly how they're set up, things are going to start going pretty fast, even just for everyday modeling, but especially if you're really working to build up speed. Now, as far as the drawing review, this was actually what was Model Mania 2024. So before I jump into this, I like to just look at a couple of things. First of all, whenever you see, for example, the word through, when we're speed modeling or modeling for a competition, don't use the whole wizard. It's through all, it doesn't care. You can just sketch a circle, it'll be fine. That's what I recommend there. With things like this 30 and this 15, we have a center line through the middle, that's symmetry. That should immediately trigger in your mind that there's symmetry there. Other items reference geometry, they're there in case you want to measure or verify something. SolidWorks does a pretty good job as far as giving you everything you need. One other thing that I mentioned to people is if you find that you're breaking out a calculator and you're doing a lot of math, you're probably doing it wrong. It shouldn't be that complicated. They give you everything that you need to complete it on the drawing. So just something to be aware of there. Now, I did print this out for myself, even though it's like pitch black in here. I can see it, I'm fine. So when you actually do Model Mania, they do print it out for you. You can actually see that. So I'll kind of do my best here, just so I have it as I'm going through. So first item here, we'll go ahead and start. This does have everything in millimeters. One item that I'm gonna do to start out with so I don't forget is add my material. That's something a lot of people forget. You get through the model and you may have done it perfectly, but if you don't add material, your mass isn't gonna be right. So I'm gonna start on the top plane. Again, here, utilizing my on-screen callouts. I have my mouse shortcuts. Now notice this is a corner rectangle. Tab A allows me to change through the selections in my property managers on the right. That's tab A while it's selected. So from here, I'm just gonna start adding a lot of my dimensions in. Again, I'm using the center rectangle or the so that I have this symmetry. Now I'm also going to add my circles in here at the same time because I can just make sure everything's gonna be lined up appropriately. And you still wanna make sure you're fully defining sketches. If not, you have no idea what is gonna be shifting on you. Now a right click, you can customize this bar. I can say, I'm just gonna go right into an extruded boss base. I don't have to exit most of my sketches. So from here, this is gonna be five and I'm going downward for a reason. Part of it is I don't have a reason not to, but the other reason is when I go ahead, I can see my sketches. So I'm going to do my extruded boss base vertically. That is actually referenced from that top face. Again, I'm not big into doing math when I don't have to. Notice the green check mark next to my cursor. If I click on that, it accepts that as being completed. I can go ahead and choose this also for my, my um, through all cut here. I should have just done through all both, thought I clicked on that. So here we have most of our solids kind of completed. We have a couple more things we're gonna do. So the bottom portion here, again, is gonna be on the front plane. Because I utilized a lot of symmetry, I don't necessarily have to worry about creating planes, creating reference geometry or anything like that. Absolutely use the planes that you have whenever you can. We don't need to be wasting time creating extra information. Just makes it more confusing for you to, to go through with that. Told you I was gonna click on that. 
to show it as I went through. So I use escape inside of SolidWorks pretty frequently. We'll use extruded boss base. Again, there is a through all option here for both. That's just gonna go through, but that'll include the circle at the bottom. Now, if I have that last section here that I'm doing, which is kind of this middle kind of rib, I am actually going to use a rib feature for that, and I can link into that silhouette edge. So I'm using a lot of mouse gestures right now just to kind of get through a lot of this basic modeling. I can exit my sketch, again, go directly into my rib tool. This is going to give me equal material on both sides. We can go ahead and move down. Pretty much what I have left is a bunch of fillets. So first set of fillet, this is gonna be eight millimeters. This is gonna be on these corners. Make use of your selection bar. I can choose all four at once. And then from here, this is gonna be two. Notice that I'm typing in my value first. That's what's active. Whatever SolidWorks has is blue, that's active in that screen. So if you can kind of get to where you recognize that, the order in which you do things can be just can make a huge amount of difference. Here I'm choosing a lot of faces, choosing edges strategically. And then if I hit Shift M, that's 155.58 grams. And that is actually the correct result. So it took me like what, maybe three to five minutes. Now granted, I looked at this before today, so didn't come into this fresh, but you can see a pretty good example of how I very rarely went over to the left. I didn't use my command manager at all, which is good because I have my zoom bar there. So it's good that I didn't have to do that. <laughs> so try to keep focused on your design. Try to kind of get some of these shortcuts down so that you're not having to kind of rummage over inside of your tree. Now for the second section, this is where we would come and say, hey, you know, we have to make some of these changes. Please read everything they give you. That seems redundant, but you'd be surprised. I do it myself. So we can see here a couple of things here. We need to increase the upper boss to be tangent to the blue face. They do actually tell you tangent, so that should be a hint. The blue face is what we're gonna use for the basis to add the five degrees of draft. That's the majority of what these changes are if you take a look at them, all five degrees of draft. So some of these are referenced, some of these are gonna update as we expect. So let's go ahead and come back here and I'm just gonna save this. This is a good time to save it, save early, save often. So from here, what I can actually do is I can use my breadcrumbs and I can edit this sketch. Now I want this to be tangent, so I'm just gonna remove that dimension and this is adding sketch relations. Now, because this is the very first sketch in my part, I tend to not want to delete something unless I'm absolutely sure how it's going to update because this will affect literally 100% of everything underneath it. So just be aware of that. There's another way that we can kind of compensate for this section here, and that's just to go ahead and have a sketch, do convert entities, and then we can just kind of blow the whole thing away. We don't need to kind of elaborate on that too much. Other things you might want to do is make sure that the order in which you do things is going to be correct. It can affect how things update. So from here, if I go ahead and do my draft, this is going to be five degrees of draft. And they did give us in our drawing that blue face, which we're going to have as the neutral plane. So I can add these other faces to it. And if we view this from the front side, we can see it's kind of at an angle, but it does actually draft everything. Now for my rib, that did not have the draft applied. The draft was above it in the tree. The reason why I did it that way is because this draft has, or the, the rib feature itself has draft actually applied inside of it. It will draft differently if you do it through this method. If you do it through the regular draft tool, it drafts more faces than you anticipate. As this is, it only drafts the sides of the rib going outward and not the top or the bottom. I do have an error here. This is because edges are missing. They show you in red where they were. You can just right click and say clear. I don't need them there. 
Now, something to keep in mind here, this is the little tiny stuff that can kind of ruin it for you. See this particular fillet here and see how this fillet goes upward. Mine is going downward. That is enough for you to not be accurate. That's enough to throw your mass off. Normally with things like this and fillets, this is an order of operations issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove that face and I'm going to do this in a couple of different steps instead. So I'm going to do this side, see how it is now going upward. And then I have one more that I'll add in and that's just going to be around this edge. So that should give me my end result here. And so that's 202.06 grams. And again, I think that is, that is correct. There could be one thing, actually when I looked at my sheet, it wasn't correct, so I just would have lost. There's one thing in here to be aware of. And this is something that doesn't always throw an error, but depending on how you did this, you might want to double check the rib sketch. This is a very small thing and it's hard when they don't give you an error for it, but I had actually dimensioned that to this particular edge, which is now at an angle. So it could be that that is not necessarily correct. So if it'll let me pull that angle or that point. There we go. So that was okay there, but let's kind of make sure this is going to be linked up the way we anticipate. Let me go back into that there. Sorry, that screen came up again and kind of knocked that off for me. So that is something to just be aware of there. I'm not sure if that made a difference, but I might have some other kind of tiny error. Nope, that was enough to fix it. So I was off by a gram and it was because of that, because I chose an edge that was now at an angle. That's enough to throw that off just that little tiny bit. And those are hard to find because it doesn't throw an error. It doesn't indicate that anything is wrong. That's something that just kind of over time, we kind of learn to kind of look for things like that. So that actually does give me the right result then of 201.62. So I had a little bit of a mistake there. So I would have lost that competition because I didn't have the right answer written down. Again, the idea here is utilizing a lot of the on-screen operations, not necessarily going into the design tree all the time. You can't get around it 100%. Again, I'm using just a regular basic three-button mouse. If you have a fancy one, you can probably automate that even more. So, all right. That's where I'm going to end here with Model Mania, just some tips and tricks and going over the solution for that.